Welcome to our pizza party. Listen, before we get started in the party, we just wanted to take a moment to send a, a special message to our, our fellow Canadian, uh, Steve Dixon, who passed. Um, so cheers, a toast to a magician and uh, a mentor and fellow Canadian. So welcome to our party. We are certainly well you know, glad you're here joining us live stream edition, our first very episode. Right, what pizza you got? What's, what's on your plate? Ooh, the I've pizza. got mine already. We've got we've got special guests here tonight. My name is Ryan Joyce. This is my name's Gramazing, and then we have special guest all the way over in Niagara Falls. Bruin, right over here. Greg Bruin. Yeah. Greg, you look like you're in a pizza oven. Hey, I am ready, baby. You are. <laughs> what do you got on top of it? Well, there's only one topping. There's only one actual topping that you can put on a pizza that is a must. What's that? Hot peppers, baby. Hot peppers. Hot peppers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hot peppers. I'm going to put the baby in while we're talking, so I got to get her ready here. I have to admit, I put some peppers on mine as well, but mine were uh, here. Look, it's. it's uh, got to have the hot peppers, man. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. There we have it. See, over here, I ordered, we ordered a pizza, and I have, you know, this box is the enemy, but inside is a delicious Hawaiian pizza. You got to have that pineapple sweetness Oh, no on way. Pizza. Yeah. No, pineapple does not belong on pizza. That is a, that is a certainty. What are you Where talking about? Pineapple's the best. Right. Created in Chatham, Ontario, another Ontario local. It's, no, I totally disagree. Pineapple. Guys, you can argue all you want about pineapple and all the other stuff. If you don't have hot peppers on your pizza... Just forget about it. That's all I'm telling you, man. Forget about it. I don't care if you're a vegetarian, you eat meat, whatever. Like, I'm all gluten-free, so I got gluten-free crust going on. What? Got to have the hot peppers. And where currently are you standing? I'm standing in my kitchen, baby. Come on, man. <laughs> He's, already He's already got a new hot. job, folks. Jeez, Greg has got a new job. He's in the new essential uh, category. He's working down one of those pizza shops. And I think these are the coolest things ever. I, you know, I love this. Like, yes. Look at this. this. This should be a magic prop. <laughs> yeah. You are in your. <laughs> hey, wait. This is this back in my Dovac days with the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there people that know the actor are going to be going, okay. <laughs> is there anybody else in the theater with you, or is it literally just you? Unfortunately, yes, there is one other person here. Oh, oh yeah. He, he, yeah. He's, he's, he's oh, I know, Johnny. Oh, there he is. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. Well, get away. You're like, that was too close, man. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you got to get your six feet away. <laughs> yeah, of all people, I got to make sure he's at least six feet away. <laughs> that's, what, it all. that's what this is for. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, have, you, have you pulled it out of the oven, or is it still piping? I... I just put it in. Like, come on. It's, I'm not a magician with, with food. Oh, yeah. I got 11 more minutes. I got 11 more minutes. I'll keep an eye on it, though. Well, as we all, as we all know, Greg has his own show in Niagara Falls. Let's let's look at uh, just a little promo of. of Talk about promos. Oh my goodness. Greg, did you do that yourself? Do you have a hand in that promo? Yeah, actually, uh, years ago, and I think you and I have talked about this a bit, I really got into After Effects. I became like a junkie for actually quite a few years. I still kind of am. So I actually did a lot of the editing and uh, some of the films from different shows and stuff. But uh, yeah, I did all the 3D work and everything all myself. So pretty, pretty proud of that because that's, yeah. Three, there's three geeks right here, totally, that are in the same basket, so. Uh, yeah, well, well, well done. I always, yeah, it's always fun finding music for your own promo as well. Um, we, want to, we want to share a little clip, because uh, like your, your theater right now is obviously closed, right? So what is the state? What, where are you at? 
So we're looking at April 6th. We're probably being a little bit, I mean, obviously we made that date a few weeks ago. Uh, personally, we're just going day by day. And you know what, at the end of the day, it gives us time to work on stuff. We're actually just getting ready to launch a new show called Wonder. And the show is a lot more story based about my life and, and my animals and stuff. So it's given me that time to work on that. And a lot of those routines are a little different because they're more, because they're story driven, there's a lot more in the music and things that I have to really think about. So. We're just going to take that time right now. We're doing some repairs on the theater and getting things like that done. And yeah, we're just sitting here waiting. But April 6th is what we're looking at. That's, yeah, well, that's great. I mean, nowadays, it certainly is interesting times. Does this impact any of the tigers? How is the, any of the animals affected by any of this? Is there anything you have to change, like habits or routines? Not really. I mean, the big thing is, is uh, you know, it, we, we just, we, we're with them every day anyway. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that we just got to keep, they won't be on stage necessarily. So maybe in about a week or two, we might get to where we have to go and bring them out uh, to the theater because a lot of that stuff that they do in the show is good behavioral enrichment. They enjoy it. Matter of fact, one of my cats is 17 now and uh, we rotate the animals, but she's the one that never wants to stay home. So the night that it's her night off, she sits there all, as we leave and it's, Wah! and she's like crying to us. So. So yeah, I think, you know, we'll probably maybe another week, we're giving them a little downtime right now. And, uh, well, you know, we'll probably end up, depending on how long this goes, we'll get them over here at the theater and start working them on stage. Stage is like home for them, right? They started right. there very young, so. Right. And I can't imagine uh, the what the strip looks like. I mean, the whole downtown's got to be empty. Yeah, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's like, it's like tumbleweeds and it, it's kind of amazing. There's not much going on at all. Yeah. Uh, I think my car is one of the only two or three down here right now. Wow. Oh my God. Well, when there were, when there was lots of people and there was capable of doing magic, you close up, you, you filmed something in a real fun spot that we thought we should share with people. Okay. Is it ready uh, yet? Is it, is it ready? Is it? Getting there. It's getting almost, you can start well, if you get real close there, the crust is getting nice and crusty. Oh, Look at yeah. that. Yeah, Fresh that looks... baked, baby. <laughs> that looks tight, right? peppers? Look at that again. Look at that again. Oh Whoa. boy. I, I think it makes me want to have a slice. Well, let's play. <laughs> let's play. Let's play this. Hey guys, you guys enjoying the falls? Oh, yeah. Hi. Hey Chad, how are you? Good to see you. Hi Joanna. Hi. You guys enjoying the the view on break? Oh yeah. I know you guys wanted me to make the falls disappear, but the city didn't think that was a good idea. No. Sorry. <laughs> but you want me to do something real quick? Yeah. Sure. All right. Can I borrow your coffee? Oh yeah. Definitely. You're done? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to make the whole falls disappear. Obviously, a lot of tourists would be upset. So, can I borrow your water? Yeah. yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to take this water, we're going to pour it down into the glass, and just like the falls, you'll see it pouring down. No one won't use as much of the water as the falls does, but oh, there you go. Now, this is really cool. Watch this. Okay. A little fries here. Okay. Now, we're going to take this and we're going to go... Oh, my gosh. Right in the cup. But that's not the coolest part. The cool part is that I can actually place it in the bottom and you'll see it comes out the top. Oh my gosh. But there's a reason why this phenomenon happens. And if I come over here to you, you're gonna watch. <laughs> the water has actually disappeared just like that. That's pretty cool and I'm thinking that's a really cool thing. You guys got it. Oh yeah. Thanks a lot guys, have a great day. Huh. I'm flipping out. And we're back, Greg. Great trick. Yes, sir. Great, great What's trick that? by the falls. That was a great trick by the falls. Oh, thank you. That was thank a you. great trick. Let's get a quick you know question. Really, you know what's really cool about that is uh, those two people actually are the ones, the manager of the uh, of of uh, uh, all the stuff down there, and uh, she she never seen me do magic like close up like that. So we were on the horn blower and we we went out by the water, and when I put that over her head. She told me after she goes, she actually freaked out because she thought it was really going to go and just splash all over. She thought I was playing a joke on it. Nowadays, but, the first wait, thought people would have going through your mind is with the knife is to stab somebody if they get that close. <laughs> yeah. Get back. <laughs> yeah, get back. Six feet. Uh, did, did we get a reaction from Mr. Excitement? Did we get a live reaction from Mr. We Excitement? had a live reaction. Do you want an instant replay, though? Yeah, we do that. that. Here's an no, instant let's... replay of Mr. Excitement's. Re huh. I'm flipping out. I didn't see any pizza near him, so we must have already gone through it. Uh, do you, ha you got pizza ready? Are you about to slice? Baby, I'm ready. Greg Fruin slicing pizza in the Greg Fruin Theater. Nine you know, this, this I, I'm not trying to brag here, but I, I don't think there's any better pizza around. 
Probably not. I'm actually no longer any of the pizza around. <laughs> now, Next thing you know, there's people lined up at the front uh, trying to get pizza. <laughs> now, is it common at the Greg Fruin Theater to have Greg Fruin make the pizza for the guests? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all of it. Uh, you know, like everything, chicken wings, the whole deal, man. Yeah, I've served tables before. Don't actually laugh. One New Year's Eve, we were overbooked, and it was we were still doing plated service, and uh, it got really behind. And I used to be a keg waiter back in the day. So I actually jumped out, grabbed, started grabbing plates. I stacked them up the arm. I headed out. <laughs> And customers were standing there kind of looking at me like, what, what are you doing, dude? But I had to get done, man. Had to get done. Now, oh um, there's this, we... sorry, there's this show on Netflix right now that is just overtaking Canadians. Hold on, hold on guys. Look at this. <laughs> you see that? Here. I'm blowing the fumes there. There you go. That's the dibs. I can almost taste it. That's amazing. I can smell it. I can smell mm. the pizza just coming. I can just smell it. Uh, 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 the pizza coming through. Oh, hold I think on. Before Mine's going to be really hot. I'm going to give it a second to cool down a bit. Okay, well, while people do that, let's uh, let's everybody who's uh, watching, make sure to um, uh, open up another browser if you can, if you want to follow along with some of our trivia, and head on over to magicianmasterclass.com slash play. Uh, because we're going to give you a Greg Fruin trivia question to start. So when you open that up, um, it says enter and then uh, and then wait. So uh, open up. Well, let's flash that one more time. Here's the address magicianmasterclass.com slash. John says he can win this one. I bet you he can. <laughs> this one's probably pretty easy. I'm going to open it up as well. I hope I did it right. Here we go. All right. So. Let us go over to trivia question. What world's greatest magic TV special did Greg Fruin perform his award-winning FISM act on? Was it one, three, five, or 15? <laughs> Lock in your votes. I think I'm going I know for, the answer to this one. I'm we'll, going for 15. We'll let, we'll, we'll, let it, we'll let people log on for a minute. We'll keep that active before we answer. But All right. That is your, there's your, your mix. Ah, do you know, Graham? I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 15. I'm lo all locked in and I, loaded. Yeah. It's got to be World's Greatest Magic 15. Final team. answer? Final answer? Yeah, I mean, my favorite, my favorite episode of World's Greatest Magic is 14, but oh, yeah. 15. I'm pretty sure that's the one that you're in. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm almost pretty close. close. Lock it, in. Close. Lock it in. All right. Well, let's reveal the answer. I think we gave it a long enough. Ready for the drum roll? We have no drum roll. Of course, it is one. <laughs> the very first one. Of course, of course, of course. Did you get it right? Did you get it? If you did, make sure, uh, yeah, you, you go back and select it because we got to go on. And if you want to ask Greg a question or anybody a question, go ahead and do it on the screen that's there in front of you. And we'll get try to get to those questions as well. So. Yeah, so now the, the hot topic, in addition to everything that's going on, is this the, the Tiger the tiger King. Greg. Sorry, I just for a second there changed over. I had a problem with my internet, so I'm back up. Sorry about that. Oh, okay, no worries. Fine. Are we okay just, now? Yeah, you we look got, great. You look crystal clear and great. You look like you just cooked a pizza. You got it, baby. Uh, <laughs> we were just about to ask if you have watched The Tiger King. I, I watched a little bit of it. I haven't got through the whole thing yet. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like we're live right uh, now. You know, the unfortunate thing is, is like I said this to a lot of people. Uh, I've known these; they're in the industry. I've heard a lot about different things, but let's put it this way: just keeping it simple. There are some nutty people in all walks of life, uh, whether it be magicians or musicians or people that hoard tigers. I mean, come on, two hundred and sixty some odd cats—that's a little much. But hey, the show says it for you know it. The characters are interesting. I give them that. Unfortunately, I think the lost part here is is that none of those people actually cared about the animals. You can't look after 260 animals and be, you know, but I haven't seen the whole thing, so I'll watch the rest and make my opinion. I'm but I will that. say, yeah. nutty, nutty, nutty. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. I'm sure you've gotten lots of messages. How many tigers do you have? What is, how many tiger animals? 249, I'm not quite up there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of pizza. Yeah, that's a lot of pizza. 
No, we only have four cats. And, you know, my oldest is 17. Uh, wow. We we went through, I think, if you know, Ryan, about uh, three years ago, one of my, I uh, lost one of my tigers to cancer. Uh, I got right here. That's wow. his right. cancer tattoo. And uh, wow. we went through yeah, that's, seven, that's he had seven tumors. We did three different surgeries. He actually spent two years in remission and we actually were pretty excited. We thought he was going to, you know, stay that way. But in the end, it came back. And so for us, you know, the animals are number one. It's like family. It's, it's you know, it, yeah. it's not just the magic. I mean, yeah, it's great to say, hey, we got a tiger in the show. But these, these animals are part of my life. They're part of my family. They're, they're you know, so. Absolutely. Yeah, I that's... won't talk too much about this because I get really teary-eyed. Yeah, and I no, gotta be no, cool no. on this. This is the pizza party, man. It is. Well, we've got we. Uh, uh, Pete asked a question. He wants to know if you deliver. Uh, yeah. Whatever's left at the end of this, I may deliver. There you, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Send your questions. Yeah, that's um. Yeah. Well, how much food does it take to feed four cats? How do you measure food? Uh, you know, it's not really on. You know. It's around 20 pounds a day each, roughly some days. They have to have a fasting day at least one or two days a week because their bodies aren't designed to be, you know, fed every day. Um, so, yeah, it just depends on the week, right? And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of meat, but they're big, right? It's like a horse. My, we, have, we have six horses, and, wow. you know, no one ever asks, how much does a horse eat? Well, they eat a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. How many, right. So how many animals in total do you have? You must have, you have a zoo. Not really, kind of, maybe. <laughs> so we have uh, quite a few different uh, rescue cats, and like house cats and dogs. We have uh, two different rescue dogs right now that we have with us. Uh, one rescue cat. Uh, we've got another dog. Uh, obviously, the doves in the show. I've got a few parrots, a couple of rescue parrots. One from way back in the day when I was living in the Bahamas, I rescued a parrot there, and I ended up not finding a home for her, so she ended up staying with me, and she's now one of my family, and uh, we have six horses, one or two of those. They're my, my wife and daughter do the horse side of things, but they've done some rescue work with that. So yeah. Wow. wow. And yeah. we got barn cats that we actually feed and they, they just come around, but we feed them and we've actually gone and like, I'm on the board of directors now of the Niagara uh, Humane Society. And the great thing about the Niagara Humane Society, it started in Welland where they actually have, uh, uh programs to bring in animals that are possibly uh, outside animals, but like barn cats and stuff to get them, uh, to get them neutered. So they don't, you know, obviously cause more population that might in the end, end up into all of the, uh, the, the, um, is that? Yeah. So, you know, they just trying to keep the numbers down, obviously. So we've gotten ours done and yeah, it's, so that's about it. I don't know how many that is. I didn't add it up. Uh, Wes wants to know if you can make a stuffed crust, by the way. Oh, mm. maybe. <laughs> I never tried it. <laughs> but I'm telling you guys, we may have to make this interview end quick because I'm yeah. not bragging, but damn, this is good. But you're eating that pizza in front of someone you're... else. Like, I mean. Quick, quick do a card trick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, quick. Story. <laughs> I got a story. Hold on. <laughs> so all my backstage guys know. So uh, there's a couple of routines, especially this one card routine that's done to music. And during the musical portion, you know, especially when you, you know, it's like Ryan, when you've been doing something like hundreds of times and it'll be like, and that's near the second half near the end of the show. So it's getting close to like finish time. And I, I eat like a pig after the show because all the energy that I, so right. sometimes I'm doing the card trick and I start thinking about food. And if I think about pizza during the <laughs> card trick, three times I've thought about pizza, two of them, I screwed the trick up. One, I almost did. And I got out of it because I went, no, stop thinking of pizza. <laughs> so, and that's actually a 100% true story. <laughs> I totally get autopilot, man. I wish I had the luxury of being able to cook. <laughs> oh. Man, that's, uh, that's really, yeah. Well, I uh, one more bite before we we let you go. We well, no, we got one more big thing we got to talk about. I'm curious uh, if if yeah, this just released today. 
this is all ties into what you're what you're doing with the Humane Society as well. You've got a big mm. live stream coming up. Yeah, this is so much. This is exciting this news because we exciting. I, at home we have four rescue animals, so we're big oh, support, cool. big supporters of Humane Society and everything like that. So this Perfect. is great. This thank is great you for news. your. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, I've gotten some good friends, uh, Ryan being one of them, that I reached out to, and we're going to do a, uh, a live-streamed magic show from the theater. Now, not all the acts will be here, just me, but we're going to live-stream them onto the stage, and we're going to perform in a way that almost will feel like a real show, hopefully. Uh, but each guy will be in their own place doing it, whether it be in their living room or in their garage or... One of the other magicians owns his own theater, so he's going to do it at the theater. So we're going to put together this show. It's going to be about, uh, we estimate around 45 minutes to an hour of family magic. And uh, we're going to ask, uh, it's a free show, 100% free for anyone to come watch. But we're hoping that uh, we're going to ask for some donations to the SBCA. Uh, because uh, right now, you know, times are tough for everybody. But uh, we always forget about the animals. They don't have a voice. So... We're going to try to be a little bit of a voice for the animals and raise a bit of money and hopefully uh, help out a little bit if we can. And what's the date? Uh, so the date is going to be next Wednesday, April 1st at uh, 7 o'clock. I think that's April Fool's, isn't it? Correct. That's the Magician's Day, the day to fool you. There you go. That's a, that's yeah, a yeah. good day to, uh, to have a show. And what time is the, the show at? Sorry. 7 o'clock Eastern, so wherever that means in the world to you. Uh, West Coast would be like four o'clock, I guess, and then uh, yeah. Oh well, that's. Uh, I've got a big question here. I don't know if I can get the whole thing in here for you. This is submitted, but uh, this is uh, who said. Tell us before uh, I get. This is a live stream question. Who are some of the people that you've got coming on the uh, on next ah! Wednesday? Who are some of the performers? Well, uh, we of course have Ryan Joyce, uh, and Ryan I actually have known for years, and I'm really excited because the routine. I actually asked you about this routine, and I won't t uh, tip it yet, but it's going to be really super cool. Fun. And it oh, is super great. cool, and I hate you for it because I wish I would have thought of it. So damn <laughs> oh, you! No, oh, that's fun. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, John Durenboss uh, from AGT, The Ellen Show, uh, also uh, uh, ex uh, Philadelphia Eagles football player for 11, 12 years. Uh, we've got Kevin James from the Illusionist Tour, wow. and uh, Leonardo Bruno, who's also from the Illusionist Tour, will be there. Uh, we got Charles Bach, uh, a good friend of mine who's got a show down uh, in South Carolina. Uh, we got Real Rick Wilcox from uh, Wisconsin Dells. He's going to be popping in, doing a little magic for us. Uh, Chris Stoltz from St. Catharines here, who does a lot of great uh, gambling style magic and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm, I'm trying to go in my head here because I didn't have a list sitting in front of me. <laughs> oh, I think that's, that's right. everybody. That's, that's pretty great. That's a pretty Maybe great list. And this yeah. is for everybody this isn't just specific magicians right this is going to be a family magic show we're all doing routines and actually i have a little insight on some of the routines people are doing and and the great thing is it's not maybe the routines you would think if you were a magician thinking oh uh, well kevin james he would do this or that uh so it's gonna be pretty exciting it'll be a good show i think we're gonna have some fun it sounds like a blast Triple snaps for great for triple us. snaps and an incredible <laughs> cause too an incredible cause especially during times like this I mean, there's various people that get forgotten about, but totally the animals, and that's a great charity that you're doing for. So, Greg, thank, thank you. you so much for doing that. Yeah. And of course, thank you. And there will be a link and all that put up when we do it, so it'll be great. And and just a reminder, all magicians that are watching and will watch, when things get back again, make sure to go and check Greg's show out and support the theater and everything he's doing down there. It is incredible. Incredible. Oh, it's amazing. Thanks, it's amazing. It's a real deal Las Vegas experience right here in Canada, right in Niagara Falls. And we got pizza. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> and, you, and you got pizza, baby. It's made by Greg Fruin himself. Can you imagine people ordering it thinking I'm back here, like flipping the dough and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Greg, I got one question for you that I'll try sure. to read out. And this is, uh, okay, so um, this is about props. Getting props customized to your style. Ah. And so any suggestions oh. for starting uh, to build and customize something to your style? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing I always try to tell young magicians is, <clears throat> you know, when you create, we always think as magicians, we always think the trick first. We always think magic, magic, magic. And of course, that's important. The trick is very important. It's our tool that we use to uh, entertain. But we have to understand that it's just a tool. So I think you really have to figure out who the character is. And for me, when I was getting ready to do uh, FISM, and the IBM and the SAM competitions. One of the things that I sat down, I mean, I had all these ideas written down and it was like, 
but I realized that I hadn't figured out yet, well, who am I? What is my personality or what, what should my magic look like? And being a, obviously a huge uh, fan of Lance, uh, you know, not that I, I don't want to say I ripped Lance off, but I think I emulated like a lot of people Lance a lot, you know, uh, very slow style, but it wasn't me. So I finally figured out that it's important that I have to have that character. Who am I? And once I figured that out, then it evolves pretty easily because you can take those traits that your character is and apply them uh, to the routines or to the, to the props. So if you think about different magicians, uh, you know, like Dan Spiri, he's got a dark look and the props are dark and whatever. And then you see a guy like, you know, well, using Lance as an example, and then you've got that classical look with the, so I think your character will drive uh, how your props and how your magic will come, come together. That's great. That's, couldn't been answered any better. And you can't figure that out. Just eat pizza. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Fruin. <laughs> wherever you are eating your pizza in the comfort of your own home. Yeah, if you're eating pizza, thank you so much for tuning in to our wacky magician's pizza party with Greg Fruin, baby. Greg Fruin, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Greg. All right, guys, thank appreciate you. it. I'm off to finish my pizza. We'll talk soon. Thank Sounds you so great. much. Let's, uh, uh, let's jump right into a video from, uh, from uh, of course, a great friend, Ryan Pilling, who is doing something incredible called My Magic Meeting, but here he is. Let's jump into it. My God, how are you holding up in these crazy times? I'm, I'm good. I, I have my pizza I'm working on, uh, <laughs> joining in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the thing is, I, I work from home pretty much my whole life, so it's not that big a transition for me this this time. So, Did you already have like a schedule of things you wanted to accomplish and now you just have more time to do that? Or is there, <laughs> or is there a new list that's now been established? Yeah, I've, I'm finding that this week as of last Thursday is now busier than most weeks of my life. So yes. <laughs> the opposite has happened. You've got a couple of projects that you're heavily involved with, which is super exciting. I mean, IBM Jam Lecture Series, which is on the Facebook page. Tell, tell everybody a little bit about that because uh, we have lots of IBM members that are watching. Yeah. And this is open to absolutely anybody, uh, IBM member or not, because it's just on the Facebook page. Uh, every night, it was as starting last Sunday and going through for two weeks, Every night or every day, there is new live lectures being presented from some of the top magicians, and and me too. So you know, it's covering the the, the range. <laughs> I, do, I love watching your stuff. You're so creative. But uh, yeah, so every night we're interviewing and talking and taking live Q and As. And and last uh, uh, Sunday night we had Oscar Munoz and David uh, Hira, and the Shazam podcast was doing a live episode. It's, it's been great. Tomorrow with uh, Harrison Greenbaum is interviewing uh, Matt King. Wait, th that was yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> yesterday we had Harrison Greenbaum doing a live interview with Matt King, who was like a hero of mine. So it's pretty great to be involved in this process. Oh, that, have you been to Vegas? Have you seen Matt's show? I have watched his show about six or seven times, like a, a research project. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. He certainly is a, a, someone to put on a mantle, that is for sure. So that was IBM. That was great. That was a really good interview by with Ryan there. And, I mean, that's only the first half. We do have a second half. Um, it's incredible it's the things true. he's doing for the magic community, sharing so much, getting people connected. And so you did, creative, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did this interview um, earlier this week, and we have a second part here. Um, we'll roll that right now. I have a, another project that you're also working on that – is, is in the same you know virtual space as well what tell us about that yeah this is how i got suckered into all this stuff is mymagicmeeting.com and so last monday or two weeks ago monday morning i thought you know what i'm gonna put together an online magic club meeting i love magic meetings and i really miss uh, miss not having them so i was like oh let's host one and this is just a project i did independently and set it up in about four hours to host the following thursday and the next day I get this email message from uh, Alex, the IBM president saying, hey, can we make this an IBM thing? That's amazing. So, you know, it's just that example. You just put something out there and try it out and you never know who's paying attention and what it might turn into. So. Absolutely, and so people can, it's mymagicmeeting.com. People can go yeah. and register. I'm assuming it's, it's a free gathering. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it started out as, literally just me hosting meetings and the first one we had 80 magicians from around the world and across Canada 
uh, just coming together and, and it was run like most magic meetings. Kind of had uh, about five or six people giving a short talk, 10 minutes or less. And then it opened up to the floor and we just had different people sharing tricks and making comments and it was fun. <laughs> and what magic are you working on right now yourself, personally? I, I, well, I was in the process of preparing for the uh, FISM North America Championship, which would be happening in uh, a couple weeks from now, but no longer. Yes, I saw your name on the list. I was so excited for you. Yeah. Uh, that was a bit of a leap for me. It's not the sort of thing I normally do. It's definitely outside my comfort zone. But uh, is it? I would. We should separately. I know that I would love to hear about <laughs> the process with that because that's a, certainly a big decision to make. Thank. Uh, you know what? Huge shout out to Ryan if you are at home. I bet he's probably hosting one of these many meetings. It's Thursday night, and I bet he's doing an IBM meeting. But uh, I do now understand why he made pizza with social distancing pepperoni the other day. Right. He was doing <laughs> his interview, getting ready for this. So much fun! Everything that they're doing there, and some of the names they've been, you know, hosting over at both IBM fan, you know, Jam Page and uh, and Ryan's My Magic meeting. So go check that out. Super fun. Uh, and this is the time where we got to get together like virtually and we've got to encourage each other to different challenges and stuff. You know, you got to reach out to your magic buddies. We've got a core of magic buddies. In fact, we've always had this kind of fun vibe of challenging each other to do things. We've even made a couple of videos about it. We had this one series about uh, dollar store challenges. So the, we would have a breakfast, the three buddies would get together. This would be grimazing myself and our good friend Ryan Edwards, and we would go to the dollar store, spend five bucks, and while we sit down at breakfast, we would kind of create something out of it. So here is a little clip from that venture. You're gonna run. So is this part of our 60 seconds? Oh. <laughs> Look at the talent. <laughs> oh. We're gonna get kicked out. Like what every magician needs. Glitter by the ball club. Graham, I'll uh, I need you to pick one. The choice is yours. I will freely choose this one. This one? The soccer, yeah. Alright, let's try this. Get a tennis ball. Yeah, let's Choose football, no. Choose it's, soccer. This is American football. I mean, uh, English football. Shut up. <laughs> Let's get a quick reaction from Mr. Excitement. Um, that man, I can't believe that. Like, how long ago was that? That's a weird time capsule in time doing the dollar store challenges. And we talked about when this uh, whole virus started about ideas that we could do for, you know, all the content that we're doing here about doing these dollar store challenges. But that itself is going to be a challenge. Yes. Um, but we are about challenges here, right? There are. It's a good way to be, uh, you know, use those creative juices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to shout out someone here. I was I noticed someone here. They did not make pizza. I think it was like uh, Quaid the Mystic or something. They made some nachos, some delicious nachos. But you know what? Uh, it's like pizza. It's like yeah. pizza. It's like an American uh, Mexican pizza, right? It wins. Yeah, it's close enough. Who doesn't like nachos? Yeah, who doesn't like nachos? Well, there it is. So, you... but that we need to have a nacho challenge. But we do have a pizza challenge. 
Yeah, we want to we want to test your creative juices. So we have this little challenge just for you. It's a magician's video challenge, and our first week's challenge is pizza. Create a piece of magic 90 seconds or less using the theme pizza. Use your imagination and let those magic tomato juices flow. Submissions are due Wednesday at noon. You'll get bragging rights, plus we'll be giving away a free copy of Michael Close's Magician's Masterclass. You can upload your submissions to magicianmasterclass.com upload. Remember, 90 seconds or less, pizza-related theme, due Wednesday by noon. Upload at magicianmasterclass.com slash upload. Ooh, get your juices ready. Get those thoughts flowing. We want to see your user submissions. We know you're watching. We want to see your ideas. We want to showcase it here on the video, and I can point really well. <laughs> Absolutely. As you see on our daily uh, live streams, we are featuring your videos each and every day. We're also featuring magicians etc etc but on the pizza party we want to have some uh, magic related themes some challenges something to get your spark buds flying and it's only 90 seconds that's all we're looking for you you do whatever you want in 90 seconds keep it clean of course but that will be uh the challenge up to you and we got until wednesday of next week at noon and we do we do have some more fun coming up soon. We will be answering so many of your questions and we're going to be having a trivia round with you as well. But Trivia's first coming up. First we still have some more special guests and you had an incredible interview. The magazine itself came out today. If you're not a subscriber to Vanish Magazine, subscribe today. Um, Paul Romani is the editor creator of Vanish Magazine and you got to sit down with him or, well, I mean, technically sit down with them at home. I Virtually. mean, when you say that in the TV business, like we sat there in nice chairs with lights. But in reality, yeah. uh, we sat at our homes and we recorded it. Yeah, Great. we had some conversations. So a little bit of serious conversation, obviously, at first, given the uh, current situation. So well, let's play the clip. I mean, I just finished uh, renovating my bathroom because that's because the plumber wouldn't come. Right. So so I've never done plumbing before. So so. Uh, <sighs> Yeah. So I, I, re, I completely hacksawed off all the plumbing and I installed, my wife and I cut this thing out of the, the top and we put it down and looked online. So, so now I'm going to, I think uh, plumbing's the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're all definitely considering diversifying uh, some of our side hustles, perhaps, uh, in the well, future. The main hustle. You know, I've been doing this, I, I, it's funny, <clears throat> um, I've been doing it such a long time that um, am I... Uh, my act, as you know, you've seen it, it's Charlie Chaplin, it's visual, so it's visually silent. Fortunate that from day one it was that sort of act. Um, yeah. And it's interesting because in, 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 in the Depression, when the world went through, certainly nothing like this, but Depression, right. um, when Chaplin was around, um, the one thing that they would do is watch movies. They didn't have internet, of course. Okay. <laughs> um, but so they would watch movies, and so who would they watch Charlie Chaplin? Because you need that. I don't think you can, you, you can't be around it all the time because it's, not going to get any better anytime soon. Well, any words of optimism? Any words of hope? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any words of hope? <laughs> oh, it's good to have a laugh. That's, well, that's a, that, that would be it. Yeah. You, you still have to have that. <laughs> it is always good to have a laugh. You um, raised a good point there, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, it was, I, I, I had a really great conversation with Paul. It was nice to chat with him. He talked about the cover as well. But um, while we were chatting about one of the most serious parts, something unexpected happened. It just shows how, you know, anything can happen when you're doing it live. Oh, there, everything's rolling. Okay. Well, how are you? How is the family? Well, we're um, hanging in there. As yeah. everybody else is, you know, <clears throat> um, uh, we homeschool, so our son is, um, we try to con keep it going as regular as possible because I think this, you know, it's really hard for an eight-year-old to grasp. It's hard for a 51-year-old man to grasp. You try to keep it as regular as possible. Thankfully, we homeschool them anyway, so, you know, you try to keep the news as much as possible away, but you want to inform them because they're curious. Uh, he says, well, I, he says, oh, well, my tutors aren't, can't come over now. How am I going to have my lesson? We, it'll be online. Um, he said, I have to social distance. <laughs> so, so <clears throat> you know, they all know, I mean, kids are smart. 
Yeah, it's this is new for all of us for sure, yeah. and we're still learning how to, ex I imagine, explain it. Yeah, this is going to have all new habits. I oh, I, I was just talking to <clears throat> to, to um, Jeff McBride about this, and <clears throat> I'm compiling now for Vanish uh, a great list. Uh, you're included in it, of course, of things that are, people are doing to help. And Jeff's um, mystery school is offering some incredible things as well. Entertainers have always been the first to put their hand up and help. The, the Australian uh, fires that were there recently, um, you know, all the entertainers got together and, and raised what they could. I mean, in the fires in Canada, we all did a, a show to raise money. We're, we're the first to put our hands up. We're the first to get phone calls when people are in trouble and say, hey, can you help? And now, for us, the roles are reversed. And um, now we need help. And I wonder how many people are going to, and this will change that as well, because um, where are these people now that when we need it, you know, because entertainers are the first. But we, what we are doing, I've noticed, is um, it's just the way we are. We, we have to entertain, but um, we also like to give. So that's a big part of what we do. <clears throat> Here he is. I'm going to go by. You go by, okay. Go to the other <laughs> Go to the other, because I said so. We don't need to see you. Go to the other toilet. Yeah, no, no, you couldn't do it. We don't know. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Welcome to the I'm real world. I, I love that. Oh, it's, yes. uh, you're blessed to have such a beautiful family. That's. <laughs> you know, that, that's what brings you a smile, right? So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is oh, fantastic. Great. I that can't was... believe that happened. You got that. I've laughed at that so many times, let me tell you. That's so great. I even said it to Paul. I was like, Paul, are you okay with that? Because <laughs> while we were recording, I didn't even realize what... Anyways, it was so fun. I also really love that Paul has the chaplain. He's got the chaplain there now. Yeah, yeah. That's really great. You know, we got to see Paul do a show in Fergus uh, last October. We sure do. And it was I one wonder... of the... Oh, yep. Oh, I was just going to say, it was one of the most amazing uh, magic acts I've ever seen live personally. It was incredible. He's truly spectacular. What a, and, he's a, and he's so creative. Surely that moment had to get some kind of reaction from Mr. Excitement. Huh. Ah, oh, Mr. Excitement. Uh, Mr. He's just full. We'll try he's, to get you excited, Mr. Excitement. We'll get him there. We'll get him there by the end of the show. Um, now earlier he this is week, expressing excitement. I hear that's what I'm getting noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excitement. We are getting so close to trivia round. We are getting so close to your questions, feedback, and answers like that. We have one interview left. I yep. got to chat with Nick Wallace earlier. What were you going to say? If you're just joining in, make sure to uh, log on to another browser or, or phone. Go to magicianmasterclass dot com slash play, and you can join in. Why don't I show everybody that little link? Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> you can do it if you want, but grab your phone because you can do like, that's how you can kind of answer the questions and everything like that. So during this next interview, listen along while you grab your phone or your iPad or your second screen device and get ready for this trivia. But I did get to talk to Nick Wallace all about kind of creating a show. And um, we're all going through unique times right now. So he kind of talks a little bit about that too. You're very good at directing, writing, and putting together a show because you work with a director and things like this. Do you have some key points for maybe the magicians at home that are watching uh, on scripting and maybe how you would possibly start writing or developing a show? Sure, yeah, I mean, for me there's, I'm either, I, I've, I have a couple of shows under my belt that I've done that are full like hour, hour and a half shows which is a different approach than writing like a bit, like just trying to do like a five minute bit that doesn't really have a home. But um, for some people, this might be daunting. But if I was doing a new show, like this new show I'm doing, the first thought I have, which I think it's like a Tommy Wonder idea is like, you got a group of people, you're in a dark room, the lights are dimming, you know, there's a stage, what happens? And I just like really put myself in the audience, like what would I want to see? What mood do I want? What, what sense of anticipation do I want? And uh, every show I've done is kind of has a overlying theme as well. So I tend to sit down and I'll like write down, I'll plot down, you know, the whole bit. And I'll, I, often I'll write most of the show before I get it on its feet and know what I'm doing. So would you say you come out 
so you're coming at it from a full that's very interesting you're coming at it from like an experience level standpoint first and then you'll put in the magic parts so yes yeah, sometimes i even know there's like um just a like mood i want to make and i don't even know what the trick is that will be put into that that was that's really great i you know what i uh, i got to carpool with nick to a show i mean a lot of it's only the start of the year, but I did some. Ama- I got to do some amazing shows, and one of those was with Nick, and I got to carpool with him. I got to pick his brain. He uh, he's very creative. He's very creative and very good at directing, producing, and scripting a show. Flawless and a total character. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But do you know what time it is? It is magic trivia time. Oh my gosh, that means no. terrifying music. Cue the music. Kidding. <laughs> bum, 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 trivia time. So pull out your devices. If you're on that waiting screen, which uh, was, uh, if you can see that from here, if you're on that, you can go ahead and click the wait, uh, wait, proceed button. And you are going to be prompted with question number one. So we're going to jump right into question number one. Here it is. Name this Tenyo prop. this? <laughs> 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 Do you Item know? <laughs> is it clean cut? Is it slice o Or D, is it rope in half? Make your selection now. Lock it in. Dun-dun. Lock in that answer as the creepy music builds. Lock it in. Lock it in. I'm going to lock in my answer. And while you're locking in your answer, I want to do a quick shout out. We're going to do a quick shout out. We have David Haynes watching. We've David got Haynes. Dean Hi. Hankey watching. We've Dean. got oh, great. Quaid the Mystic watching. And we Quaid. have Hoots watching. Thank you hope, so much for your comments and tuning in. I hope they've all locked in. Shall we go for the answer? Here it is. The answer is, of course, B, clean cut. Clean bum, bum, bum. cut. Did you know it? Now, if you got it right, you would have gone on to the next question. And we're going to be on question number two. If you didn't, you're going to have to hit the back button because we're not that fancy. All right. <laughs> uh, now, question number two. Name this magician. Is it Orson Welles? Silent Mora? Channing Pollock or Harlan Tarbell? I thought that was Cardini. I don't know what this is. Who? Uh. It's a tough one. Let's put it back on the screen. Here it is. And you name it. Do you know it? Lock your answers in. I'm going to put in my response. Boom, boom. There we go. I locked in mine. I locked in mine. It is. Channing Pollock, of course. Ooh, what a theme. Triple snapping if we're getting this right. Triple snaps, yep. what a theme. We, I mean, we had Greg Fruin talking about Lance Burton, and we connected it all with Channing Pollock. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how clever we are. You would think we knew what, what was up. Hmm, well, let's go to the next question. Who invented card warp? Who invented card warp? Here it is. Ooh, I do this one. I like to do this trick all the time. And you know what? I was performing this a lot just before all the shows got canceled. It's a great trick. It it's is. One of the first, like, really cool magic tricks I ever learned. You know, like when you go past, like, the phase of hobbyist to cool, like, cool. Yeah, after you learn that first, like, triumph trick, this is the next yep. one. Yep. Here it is the options A, Jay Sankey, B, Doc Eason, C, Michael Lamar, or D, Roy Walton. Lock in your answer now. Oh, I thought it was Michael Close. I don't know who this is. You know what? I locked in my answer. I know it. I got it. Oh, did you get it? Did you get it? Let's go to the answer. Answer is D, Roy Walton. Yes, uh, it, Roy Walton. There it is. D, did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, let's go on to the next question. Here we are. Oh, 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 oh or question four now, right? Ready? What year was the Society of American Magicians founded? Oh my gosh, they're like old. Okay, go for it. Go, go. Give me the, give me the options. Is it 1925, 1867, 1996, 
or 1902? Ooh, I have my answer. I locked it in. I locked it in. Lock in your answer. Lock it in. Lock it in. Here we go. The answer is 1902. Boom, boom, boom. Of course. Did you get it? Triple snaps if you got it. I got that one wrong. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> 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 well, Leslie, did you put 1996? I hope you didn't put 1996. Yeah, I was thinking Cool Runnings. I screwed up. I'm so sorry. Oh, let's move on to a bonus question for the SAM. Here it is. The SAM was founded in the back room of what magic shop? Ready? Was uh. it <laughs> A, Martinica, Houdini, Tannins? Or eagles. I gotta pull an audible here. I'm pretty sure it's not Martinka. Mart sorry. Yeah, it's Martinka. <laughs> that was my bad. I do like I do like the twist on that Martinica. Yeah, um, I, was thinking, I was thinking the after pizza party. I thought you know what I thought this was founded in a pizza shop, so I'm really lost here. I thought it was that should have been a pizza shop. Or I thought a pizza shop. Here the answer is <laughs> the, the martini one. Martini. Martinka. Martinka's Martinka. magic yes, shop. <laughs> and ooh. Oh, sorry. Keep going with the question because I don't know if you're throwing this in there nope, as a bonus. Is this the bonus? That's it. That was the last. That was our trivia. That was our trivia of the day. If you enjoy trivia, <laughs> let us know. Also, you've got an option there to uh, go ahead and if you've got a fun trivia idea question that you would like to submit, go ahead and put it in the box and send it. We'll be happy to include it in upcoming trivia. And let us know below in the comments how you did in the speed round of trivia questions. And if you have a question, comment below. Now is your chance, because I'm looking at the questions here. And we do have one. Um, magic is the stunning art of surprising your audience so that nothing else surprises them. Is this the best part about being a magician, or what is? That's Taking people away from their normal momentary distract and being a distraction, that's what we do. Yeah, it's the same thing. I think it's similar to being a comedian, watching a movie. It's a form of entertainment that lets you drift away for a moment. And the bonus, the bonus of magic is that it gives you that element of maybe the impossible could be possible. That's that little, I think that's why, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's why most of us like this. <laughs> is that yeah, why you, yeah. It's that little, there's a little butterfly that happens in people's stomach or their brain mm -hmm. that you don't get with music or any other art form. It's like being Ooh. stumped with something yeah dividing by zero it's that it's the closest we can get as a human yeah dividing by zero there's also a question that's a great question there's a question here from hoots uh what is the best recipe for making magic pizza now mm, we could jump to some ideas here and figure out a magical pizza i still want to eat this however i would say the best way to make pizza is a is probably the way greg did it tonight i imagine like a nice homemade crust Oh, get an award-winning act, travel yes. the world, get your own theater with a pizza oven. Mix bird feathers into the dough. dollars pizza. Knead bird feathers into the dough. Yep. Make sure that you have lions lick the hot peppers and then put them on the pizza. <laughs> yep. Yeah, absolutely. Delicious. Delicious. Those are the comments that I saw here on Those are great comments. magicianmasterclass.com slash pizza. I don't know what's going on over on YouTube direct. Do you have well, that? I do not. I do not. But we sure thank you for joining us there. We, we, uh, we were following you on magician or we, hopefully you're following us on magicianmasterclass.com slash pizza. <laughs> uh, that's where you can connect with us. We are eight fifty five, right on the nose. Look at us programming a show. Our first live stream right on the dot. Oh, I just want to give a shout out to Michael Paul live. Thank you so much for oh. tuning in and, um, giving up your, your close friend, Mr. Excitement to tune, to help us out with the live stream tonight, Michael, that is a huge help to us. Thank you so much. I want to give a shout out to Scott Boyd, who is our magician of the day on magicians talking magic in the morning. That's our morning live show. And you can catch us tomorrow morning at 10 AM. Uh, he's been watching along with mini pizzas and everything like that. And a huge so fan awesome of Mr. Remember, Excitement. Every Thursday we'll have all new guests, all new ways to interact. So it's something we can make a habit. We can all get together every Thursday. We also have Crystal Hi, Scott. and Peter Many joining in as well. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in to our very first virtual magic pizza party with special guest Greg Fruin. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 
Thanks for tuning in. We're so glad you're here. We'll see you next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ooh, that was delayed. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night, and see you tomorrow at 10 in the morning for headlines. Adios.